Hello and welcome to Thrift Miss, where I'm going to 24 different thrift stores, no repeats. And I'm trying to pull the maximum amount of value out of each thrift store. The thrift store for this video is Diversity Thrift in Richmond, Virginia. When I lived in Richmond, this was the thrift store I went to, like before I was reselling, uh, mostly because it supports LGBTQIA plus community here in Richmond and it's huge. So I'm so excited to show it to you today and hopefully we'll find some good stuff. You walk in the door and hang her right, you will be greeted with the housewares. You see this Corel Crazy Daisy, they want $3 for a single plate. I thought that this was Pyrex, but it is not. So I left that. Uh, this is mostly Christmas. Half of this housewares room was just Christmas stuff that they were trying to uh, sell for the holiday ended, you got a poop emoji that didn't dance for me, which to be honest is probably fine. And if you want an angel for a dollar, you can have a little angel baby or an entire tree of little angel babies. Bunch of paint ones that you can paint yourself. These are some global figurines. Uh, they wanted a little bit more plus they were $2, but also they were broken. So those stayed behind, but it was really cool to see some goggles. I haven't seen those in a while. Uh, random single solitary ornaments. And here's a map. It's a huge store. I uh, w Next to the housewares is the women's section. So of course I started shopping immediately and I found Fred Perry. New attacks Fred Perry is the first thing I found in the women's section and then uh, a bunch of men's shirts. These are on the bottom. These had those double racks that I hate and I'm showing you how much I've already found. I found beta bread for the first time. Oh my goodness. And I'm trying to show you. So it's going to be $3 and 75 cents. And then next to that, I found a friend who I poked to see if they were still alive. Yep. They're still alive. So friend is going to stay living on that skirt and <laughs> I found COS for the first time. Unfortunately, this had many, many moth holes, but it was cool to finally see COS in person. And when I went to the men's section, it was very empty, but I saw this gusseted crotch. And despite the fact that this does have a pin mark on it, I checked comps and this is actually a great brand to pick up. It has 177% sell through. So that went in my cart. And I also found New with tag, Lululemon, at the thrift store. I I just could not believe it. That look at look at how full my cart is getting. <laughs> okay, so I found a bunch of amazing stuff at Diversity Thrift, and I found so much stuff at Diversity Thrift that it's actually going to take two bobs to go through this haul. So I'm going to show you some of it, uh, and then I'm going to have to ship some of it out because some of it has already sold, and then other Bob is going to have to finish up this haul. Uh, in order to make sure I get everything in one video. So first thing I'm going to show you is this Duluth trading t-shirt. I have mentioned before that I absolutely love Duluth as a brand. I don't personally own any of it because I don't find it in my size and color that I would want to wear. So this is uh, like a peach salmon color. And if this was like a green or gray or black, totally would purchase this for myself. But Everything's so cheap and that car is so loud, but I'm not gonna ask for a whole lot for this, but I will know that that sells. Like even basics like that, if you price them nicely or affordably, will go. I also found a Pure Jill linen piece. This is an extra small, but as you can see, this totally would fit me. So because this is a loose fit or relaxed fit and now there we go. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> this is a log and look piece. These it's three quarter sleeves has a little bit of peplum at the bottom. And I have mentioned how much I like picking up linen and I've done really well with the linen from pure Jill. This is was, well, this is a men's piece that was in the women's section. Uh, it also was super heavily pilled like right here. Um, but my sweater shaver definitely got all of that up. This is actually still on the box lunch website. This is the Legend of Zelda. That's the little whale from a specific one that I have not played. So 
But because this is still on the website and that this is a men's small and could technically like I could wear this, I went ahead and picked that up. Also like I'm a nerd so any video game stuff I, I normally pick up anyway. Because I know it's going to sell and normally that stuff, especially stuff that's carried by Box Lunch, tends to sell pretty quickly. So excited about that. And then like a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you now is stuff, the only reason I know to pick this stuff up is from my friend Matt over at Thrift of Life, who most of you all know. Uh, his menswear manifesto, which I will try to remember to link in a comment down below, the most recent one. It's a free resource, just like my Anthro Anthology, uh, where it's free slash pay what you want. Almost a lot of these brands I'm gonna show you now, or I only know about from that. So the first one is Todd Snyder. Uh, Todd Snyder used to get more. Their outer wear still sells pretty well, but the sell through is still really good. So I picked up, that's Todd Snyder, and this is just a basic button front. Again, it's a button front because this is a spread collar, spread point collar, and I picked this up because I just thought it was cool. This is a 17 and a half neck. Again, I wouldn't know that that brand even exists if it was not for Matt. And then I am guessing because that was a 17 and a half neck and this is a 17 and a half neck that they came from the same person because it's roughly the same uh, kind of affluence in order to purchase this kind of stuff. Cause this is Laura Piana and this is actually Laura Piana branded. It's not you know, in a suit jacket, you'll have Laura Piana branded material, just like you would like Harris Tweed. This is Laura Piana branded button down. So this is just a typical, you know, dress shirt that you would wear in a, with a suit and a tie, cause it's got the button down there. And I thought that was so cool. I just got so excited when I realized that I found this brand for the first time ever at a thrift store in Richmond. I thought that was great. And the next piece I'm gonna show you is Fred Perry. Now I have found Fred Perry for in Newport News. I actually picked up one of the Fred Perry jackets. Fred Perry is a UK brand. And I picked up the men's jacket that I found in Newport News and it sold very quickly. And I found a couple of women's pieces at this thrift store in Diversity Thrift. So, this is just a sleeveless, this is a banded collar. That's what this is. And this is the Fred Perry little logo you see there on the front and there is the label where the logo is repeated. Cute little polka dot. Uh, a lot of the women's clothing uh, seems to have like a rockabilly type of feel, especially the clothing that they have in conjunction with the Amy Winehouse Foundation. And you guys saw I found a brand new with tags, Fred Perry piece with the Amy Winehouse Foundation. So this is brand new with tags, cute little check. This is linen and cotton. So you definitely know I picked that up and I could not believe what the comps were for that. So like the, the basic sleeveless wasn't worth a whole bunch, but the fact that the other piece was new with tags and uh, part of the Amy Winehouse Foundation collaboration, I was like, oh my goodness, this is good, good. <laughs> Some of the things that I have to ship out and another reason, the only reason I know about this brand is from the Menswear Manifesto is Built. I found not one, not two, not three, but five Built drop cut t-shirts. And while these don't sell for a lot, their sell through is amazing, which is why also I'm having to film this part and then give you to other Bob a little later because two of these have already sold. So this is one that has not sold. Uh, this is a raglan style drop cut. And this is like a maroon with some kind of mauvey pink color. And all these are size medium. And the reason why I was able to get five of them is because all of them were on that bottom rack that nobody wants to go in. And also, all of these were in the women's section. None of these were in the men's section, so I was able to score them because of the fact that the people that would typically want to buy this didn't know it was there. 
and it was <laughs> because it was in the wrong part of the store entirely and then also in a part where nobody wants to shop. So this one is going out soon as I switch you over to other Bob. Basically a, it's like skin colored with a pocket. So I'm guessing if you are this shade of flesh, it'll look like you just have a random nipple cover here uh, and no nipple on the other side. <laughs> Why am I weird? But this one's gonna go out <laughs> for sale. The, I will say that the drop cuts with the pockets uh, do sell for a little bit more than just the regular plain t-shirts, which I'm showing you now. We have another drop cut that is a uh, plain brown, nice dark brown color. And then this one, which is also kind of flesh colored, except this one has little brown polka dots. And again, another drop cut built t-shirt. This one is going with the pocket tee. They're actually going to the same person. So those got to go out and then a green one. And these do feel really, really nice. So uh, I feel like you could tell, like if, if you're someone that has a uh, tactile feeling for Lululemon, you would feel this and, and go look to see what it was. And then be pleasantly surprised because this is also uh, a really good seller like Lululemon, which speaking of, this also has to go out because this is sold because I found Lululemon. So this is the men's metal vent tech polo 2.0 in a size small. And the reason I know that because it's new with tags <laughs> I found. So it retailed for $98 and I cannot believe I found this new with tags. It's a size small. So I know a lot of people like rather buy the larger sizes. I have mentioned on this channel before. Uh, about the only size that I have qualms picking up is uh, like double zero or XXS or like size five or smaller shoes. I will still pick them up though, depending on what they are because little people need shoes too or, or clothes too. And so I picked this up and this is going out. This sold just like with the other two built t-shirts immediately, like as soon as I listed them. So, and then I'm gonna show you some women's clothing and uh, this is a knit square neck. That's with a square neck, because it's a square uh, knit top. I've talked about liking these little knit tops. These sell really well. I'm guessing this won't sell until we get into more springtime, warmer weather. But this is a great basic, still very much on trend. This is from the 90s. This is Jean-Pierre. And it's a size large. Again, I'm not expecting this to sell until it gets warmed up, but I thought that this was cute to pick up. I like picking up those little knit pieces. They do well for me. And I've actually sold this exact same t-shirt before, uh, one that I picked up at the bins, except I found this at Diversity, new with tags. And this is just a basic large L.L. Bean t-shirt with, this is Pima Cotton. I knew it was $22.95, so I picked this up because I have already sold this, pre-owned, very quickly. So hopefully the new one will sell even faster. And then the last thing I have to share with you before I give you to other Bob actually was gifted to me from another shopper. Uh, I was in the men's section and this other, and this gentleman who's in a Patagonia puffer was like looking through the men's. So I figured he was another reseller. No big deal. I mean, even when I see other resellers in the same section, we all don't sell the same thing. So it's not a big deal. So I was just like, I'll wait till he gets done. I'll finish this rack. And then when he's done with his rack, I will go over there. Of course, my shopping cart at this point is a mound. He speaks up. I have my headphones in. So I'm just like doing my thing. And he's like, hey, hey. It's like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, are you a reseller? I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh, maybe I'll make a friend. He was like, I don't resell, but like, do you want this? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I thought you were a reseller. Cause like I saw the Patagonia, he was like, I thought about doing it, but not really just like thrifting for myself. But I, I know that y'all resellers like these vintage t-shirts. And I looked up this Garth Brook one and they're selling for like $40 <laughs> on eBay. I was like, do you want it? I was like, 
sure. <laughs> so, uh, of course he was like, I don't know what part of eBay he was looking at because there are actually a lot of these listed. So this is uh, a single stitch. It's all black. It's XL. And this is from Garth Brooks, uh, 1996 world tour. And here are all the, the cities on the back. And so he handed this to me and I was like, okay, cool. I took it and I was like, oh, well, he's looking through the rack and if he's giving me this, maybe I don't need to go through it. Well, that's where I found the small Lululemon that was new with tags. And then in addition to this one, I found a second one. So there were actually two of these from the same world tour on the same rack, but for some odd reason he only gave me one of them. I don't know, but it was really nice for the man to do that. It definitely keyed me in that maybe, I, I did think about not doing the rack because the guy went through it, but and then I remembered, oh, he said he's not a reseller, so maybe he doesn't know all of the brands. He just saw vintage t-shirts because vintage t-shirts are huge right now. And that was really cool. So I got two of the exact same vintage single stitch t-shirt. I already checked both of these for dry rot. They don't have dry rot. and. They don't necessarily sell for $40. That's not what I have mine up for, um, but we'll see what they do end up selling for. And it was really happy and exciting. So I'm gonna go ship the three things that have sold off to their new home, and I will give you to other Bob now to finish up this haul. All right, so I'm gonna show you the rest of the items from the Diversity Thrift, and that is because it I got enough stuff to wear uh, I was listing it and it was selling before I could actually get everything listed. So I'm going to start with this shirt that was completely forgotten about in the first part. This actually I have Leah to thank because Leah purchased this for me already. If you did not see the last video I did, I actually helped, I used this to style a listing in hopes to get an older listing to sell, but Leah purchased this for me. This is a Peter Martin's shirt. Did I get that right? Yep, Peter Martin. This is 100% silk. It is a vintage shirt. This is an XL based on the measurements. There's actually no size label on here at all. I picked this up because one, look at it. Uh, two, I saw it was 100% silk. Uh, and three, I checked comps and was like, oh, oh, this is nice. Okay, so Leah already purchased this from me. I'm sure I'm showing you. <laughs> it here. So Leah, thank you. I am going to send this to you uh, now and hopefully you love it as much as I do because it is absolutely beautiful. It has, I don't know if it's a leopard or a jaguar, but it has peacocks and ze zebras, zebras, however you want to say it. It's just a really cute vintage piece and uh, I'm hoping that you will enjoy it. Uh, speaking of cute vintage pieces, I found this vintage pair of 512s. So this is a tapered slim leg. This is, uh, the 512s are a junior, a vintage junior style of Levi's and these are made in the USA. The waist measurements are a 25. So as I've mentioned before, I'm not going to list this as a size seven. I'm going to list this as a 25 inch waist with all of the measurements because it makes it easier for everyone. But this is still on trend, these high rise mom jeans. I know it is a tiny size, but I have faith that this will move, especially since it is vintage. I also picked up these brand new pair of 514s. Now these are the straight leg 514s. Uh, 514s can come in straight or boot cut. My brother prefers the 514 boot cut. You don't really need to know that, but I felt the need to word vomit that out for some reason. These are a 3030, but the measurements are actually 3031. So I'm just going to put in parentheses actual in seam 31 and I'll put that in the listing as well but I will still list them as 3030s and as I said they're straight leg so I definitely pick these up because 514 is a classic style and it's new of course I'm going to pick that up it's new with tags you guys saw the prices there the prices there are ridiculous in a good way so I picked those up now these surprised me when I was thrifting uh because 
I saw them and I felt them and then I s looked at them a little bit harder and I saw it had this gusseting. So whenever you see a gusseted crotch, <laughs> some phrasing right there, uh, <laughs> in the thrift store, that normally means it's some kind of workwear and a lot of workwear can be valuable. Uh, so I looked up this brand, this is a new to me brand, and it is Steo. And then I looked at comps for Steo, and I decided that even though this is flawed, I would pick it up, and it's flawed because it has this pin mark right here. This is the only flaw. It has this very faint pin mark. I, of course, disclosed that in the listing. But these are also a straight leg, and they are a 40, and then I think it's a 29 inch inseam if I remember correctly from me listing it. So I'm going to try this and see what happens. I, like I said, it's a new to me brand. Uh, it has a pretty great sell through uh, and I don't really have a lot of competition. So I'm not sure if it's just a rare thing to find or if it's a new brand, but you know, price is that cheap, it's worth trying out. Now this I got for myself, cause it's green. This is a rash guard. Uh, for surfing, I do not surf, but I do like to bodyboard and boogie board. And unfortunately, the bathing suits I like to wear are not necessarily conducive to staying on when you're doing those types of activities. So I picked this up um, for myself to wear uh, whenever we go to the beach, when it warms back up again. So this is mine. Uh, and because of the fact that I picked that up for myself, I am listing something from my death pile because that's what we're doing. So I listed this uh, paperback that I picked up at the bins for 25 cents. This is You and I by Leonard Nimoy uh, from the 19, I think 1973. And the paperback isn't really worth that much. It's worth between, you know, three and $15. It just depends on the condition. But the hardback, if you find this in uh, a first edition hardback of this, it can go for $100 plus. Uh, this is a book of poetry that he wrote about his life and his, the, the loved ones that he has. It's just not necessarily what you would think of when you think of Leonard Nimoy, because most people just think of this when you think of Leonard Nimoy. But uh, yeah, so something to look out for if you're interested in selling books. And again, I only paid 25 cents for this and I picked it up a while ago at the Benz, so. Glad it is up for sale now, frankly. I also found Free People, uh, which was a nice surprise. And the Free People thing I found is a faux leather skirt that is actually in good shape. I abhor faux leather. I, I understand that there are individuals that have strong feelings about leather uh, and using leather, but I personally do not like faux leather because it is more harmful to the environment, uh, just contributes to plastic waste in landfills and is, I call it pleather because that's what it is. It's pleather and the, the biggest thing is them rebranding it from pleather to calling it faux leather or vegan leather because that has definitely, I think, helped in popularity of this as a fabric in general. But that's not, again, it's just me saying words out of my mouth hole three people. This is size four. It's a cute skirt. I would think it'd be cuter if it was leather, but that's my own personal opinion. And I will sell that regardless, because again, trying to keep plastic out of the landfills. This is Beta Brand, which I am excited. This is my first time finding a Beta Brand ever. And so I found a Beta Brand skirt. I know the pants are the more well-known, but this is a really nice orange color. It has the built-in shorts. It has pockets and like I can fit my whole hand in the pocket. So it does have a little bit of waviness up here, but everything else is in really great shape. It is a size XL and I just thought that this was awesome that I finally was able to check a brand off of my unicorn list. I've checked a lot of those off for Thriftmas and it's been awesome. This is uh, my first time finding Aftco in a really long time. Uh, this is a fishing brand, all fishing tackle gear company. I don't, I think that's what it is. I'm not sure, but this is a pair of 2XL shorts. It's got the little hula girl with the marlin and the fishing and the, the bottle. It's got a couple of things going off here. So I decided to go ahead and pick this up 
Um, their swim trunks with the built-in with uh, no schmutz in there. So it's very clean inside on, on and outside. So that's why I went ahead and picked these up. You know, I, I figure these aren't going to sell until it gets warmer, but you know, it's a good brand. It has a decent still sell through still. So I went ahead and got those. So that's all the bottoms. I picked up one accessory and that's just because it's a cute little leather, like actual leather purse. Um, it's about 10 inches by 10 inches and has an 11 inch drop. So that's from here to here is 11 inches. I live near a military base and the vroom vrooms in my video are just never gonna go away until I move. So we're just all gonna have to deal with that background noise together. This is amazingly clean inside. Uh, it does have like a little slip pocket. So, but the slip pocket reminds me of flip phones. So I'm guess I'm gonna mark this as a Y2K bag because that's what it's, this reminds me of when we had our little like razors and stuff. So that's what I'm gonna mark this as Y2K because that's pretty much what I think it is because slip covers aren't like that anymore. That was specifically a phone slip. So that's what I'm marking this as. It was super cute, it's 100% leather. It does have a couple little like tiny marks, one there, one down there, which I of course denoted in listing and took close up photos of. But the leather overall is still in really good shape. So that's why I picked that up. Now this, I got excited when I found it and then got sad when I went to go list it because this actually had two holes in it, but I did not see them when I picked them up. It had one on the back and when I repaired that, I thought that was it. And then when I went to go list it, I found a second one on the front. So this is the repair on the back. It shows up much better on video than it does uh, in person, which is why cameras are great and why you normally find stuff wrong with items when you're taking photographs because that normally shows up better and you see that light gray spot that is the second repair so if you are wearing this garment you will not know this has been repaired twice of course i disclosed that and i took up close photos just like i showed you here but i did repair this this is 100 percent wool which is why it ended up with num num holes uh, and it is a men's size small i love these like professor collared that's what i call this the professor collared sweater this actually fits me great um, so this might be a something that I wear until it sells because it's cold outside. And like I said, this fits me great. So I decided to go ahead and list that instead of redonate it because, you know, if I redonate it, somebody else is probably just going to pick it up beside it has holes and then redonate it. So I fix the holes, see what happens. All right. So now I'm going to show you something that I found very interesting. So this is the brand. The brand is called J. Peterman, and this is a brand that prides itself on not necessarily following trends, but likes to do old school tailoring and more classic silhouettes. And this is this type of shirt. I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. Um, but you'll notice that this type of shirt and then the other one that's named the same thing don't look the same. <laughs> I don't understand it, but this, I picked this up. I picked actually a bunch of these shirts up, the J. Peterman's up. They were in the women's section, as you guys saw, and I've seen these on TikTok. So normally the TikTok girlies will like do get ready with me or get dressed with me and they'll put on a pair of like uh, skinnies if they're older uh, or a pair of leggings and some demonas or some combat boots and then they'll put this shirt over top of like a cute little bralette or whatever and then they'll put uh i'm guessing leather or pleather uh straps like the little strappy things to go around here and it just kind of looks like steampunky kind of uh attack on titan -y. if you don't know what an attack on titan is this is um, an anime manga um but i knew what this was it's a poet shirt or can be classified as a poet shirt if you ever watched uh fear means death 
I think it's the name of the show. I haven't gotten to watch it, but that was like super popular. So like these poet shirts were all the rage, plus like the, the robe that um, the gentleman pirate wears. So a white shirt, perfectly great. This is a size medium and this is considered unisex. So this is literally for men or women. And then the same shirt technically, or at least I could not find this exact shirt on the website, this exact styling of the shirt, but I could find this shirt on the, on the website. And when I did eBay research, both the shirts had the same name. So I just used it for both of them. But this is the same name shirt and this has pin tucking in the front. And these originally cost $98 by the way. That's what they are on the website. Some of the colors aren't available anymore. I think this color is still available on the website for this style of shirt, but the other two colors are not. Um, this is a size medium. Again, this is considered a unisex shirt. Again, another one of those where I just would see the TikTok girlies with the, the harness. They look very cute. Um, I will state that there are actually two other ones, but they have holes in them and I got them for myself. And so I'm going to show you the two books that I listed over here to make up for keeping those. And the reason I'm keeping those is because I like the look and I kind of want to see if I like it on myself. Uh, I have sensory issues, so I don't know if I could do the harness thing, but we'll see. Um, but these are two books to make up for that. And I'm keeping those ones because, like I said, these shirts fit great. And also um, because they have little small, small holes in them and I'm okay with that because if I if the harness works out for me then you can't see them anyway so this is in green and this one is in great shape I also have it in red again beautiful pin tucking in the front and these are considered unisex despite the fact that the buttons go towards the right they're still considered unisex that is not a hard and fast rule for everything so we got it in gray and medium so I have it in green red and gray and then this shirt is specifically gendered on the site as male. Again, it has the button opening to the right. So ladies to the left, men to the right. And uh, so this is a size medium. This is red. And this is J. Peterman, the J. Peterman shirt. That is what the name of the shirt is called. And I have it in red and medium. I have it in this light blue, light gray, uh, and this one is in small. And all of these have these big buttons. And this is right here, this is considered collared. These are collared shirts. And this is considered a banded collar. Some people call it a mandarin collar. That is not technically the correct. This is a banded collar. A mandarin collar would not have a button attached. That would just be like, this like this and around so there's that also i don't really like that term anyway but that's typically with the the collar style and then also a medium in this bright orange color and like i said these are specifically male gendered on the brand's website which is why i listed them like i listed these the way that they're listed on the website so the measurements for all of them are pretty much the same except for the big white flowy shirt. I saw people putting the name of the shirt that I also put in there but also putting like reenactor because again these are supposed to be uh, a more classic tailoring type of shirt. It's supposed to be piratey, swashbuckly, poety, that type of shirt. And it, because they all retailed for $98 and because of the comps that I was seeing online I decided to go ahead and give them a try again because the shirts were showed so cheap that it was worth it and I did not realize when I picked this up necessarily how much it would be worth so I do know from my friend Matt over at Thrift Life um, that John Barbados is can or can be uh, a brand to look out for and I, I never find them. And so I did, and I was excited. This is also wool, but unlike the rag and bone piece, this didn't have any holes in it when I went to photograph it. Um, this is also 100% wool. Uh, this is made in Italy and it is a size small. 
It has two front patch pockets here that don't just have the patch pocket, but also you can slide your hands in on the side. I also have a jacket like that as well. So it's, it's a completely separate pocket. It's not a flaw. It's supposed to be like this. I saw an exact comp for this exact piece, except in a size medium that had sold on eBay recently for $140. So that's what I priced this one at. I do know it's a small, but as I've mentioned before on this channel, I don't have problems selling the smaller sizes, which is why I continue to pick them up. You can't sell what you don't have. Think about that. So I did not realize that that's what I picked up. I just saw John Varvatos and because of the other things you saw that Bob showed you earlier, I figured maybe all of this came from the same person. So there, there was some high-end stuff in the men's section. And then there was also some high-end men's stuff in the women's section, which is always fun. I also picked out uh, this Venice Burnout piece by Lucky Brand. I know Courtney and Matt both have luck with this particular style from Lucky. It's just brand and buttery. I've never found <laughs> Burnout from Lucky Brand before, but I do know Henleys do well. And this is also in an amazing size. This is 2XL. So I have high hopes that this will do well. And this is kind of color blocked. So this is a navy and a charcoal gray. So I thought that was super awesome. And then we have a t-shirt. This is Voodoo Ranger. It's a type of, uh, I think it's, it's a beer of some type. Uh, Bruvana can do really well. I've bought and sold multiple beers beer related stuff. This is from New Belgium, which is most popular. I think Fat Tire is the most recognized beer from that brewery. But I picked that up. I saw exact some comps between like four and ten dollars. So again, cheap. No problem. And then I found an anthropology piece and a more recent anthropology piece. Uh, I don't find this brand very often, and I definitely don't find the more modern pieces. And I know it's more modern because this is Maeve by Anthropology instead of just Maeve. And it is this beautiful orange uh, lace eyelet piece. This is a size US 14, and it has these lovely, this lovely beaded accent here in the front along with the eyelet. So I just thought this was so cute. Like if you wear a cami underneath or a really cute bralette, you do you. I just thought this was so lovely. Or you know what? You could be daring and decide that I really love this top and wear like a turtleneck underneath of it. You just wear it all the time. Cause it's, oh, can you imagine? Like if you loved this top so much, you wore like a black turtleneck for Halloween and been one of those people. I just, it's so cute. I, I just think this is lovely. It's just very, it's, I think this is lovely. If you can't tell from me gushing on and on about it. But yeah, that is everything that I picked up uh, from Diversity Thrift. I, as per usual, I keep going into these stores and I think I'm gonna find anything and then it's just a mound. And I think it really goes to show like, normally when I go thrifting, I spend an hour or less in there and I go in and I hit my favorites and if I'm not finding anything, then I leave or not really finding a lot, then I leave. Versus because I'm doing thrift miss where I am like trying to pull the maximum amount of value and I'm literally going through each section, that's why I'm pulling out these massive hauls. But this is what I paid for everything. And then to end as always, this is how much everything is listed for that hasn't sold yet, what has sold, and then what I may make from this entire haul which I think I have done quite well for myself. So hopefully y'all have enjoyed this video and aren't tired of thriftmas yet. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye.